Hello everyone, this is Yetta. I'm going to share some dreams. Um, today is October 13th, it's Sunday, 2019. Um, this morning my brother called me from prison and uh, he heard last night, he said, he heard this. Yetta is dead, I have taken her. Roy and her both died in a car accident. And I was like, wow, that was this dream that I had. And I looked at the dream. It was March 27, 2018. So um, I wrote, this reminds me of the dream I had way back when I was doing uh, the courts of heaven. I am now persuaded, and Sven even told me, do not get in a vehicle with Roy. He is your enemy. Praise God. Um, Okay, so and I'm going to share the dream from way back when. It's kind of a long dream, but what it shows is that those that are pledging allegiance to grace, like they have their hands over their heart, pledging allegiance to grace, that God's grace is sufficient. They don't need to like walk in the ways of the Lord. Uh, those people are going to crash. Okay, now listen to this. Um, I dreamt that these two kids were in, bed, in my bed that I was babysitting. One was sleeping very close to me, and the boy was on Roy's side, and Roy wasn't in bed. Then Jennifer came in the room. I wanted her to come in bed because she looked tired. She said she was going to drive and see Jonathan, something about 500. I was trying to discern in the dream if she would be okay. I kind of felt she would be fine. So I let her go. Then a guy in a black suit and a white tie came in. His name was Godfrey, pronounced differently like goofy. He said, not God, like free of God. He had black curly hair and was young in his 20s. He and his friend were friends of Jennifer's. They had known each other since elementary school, he said. It seemed they were all dressed up for a wedding. Since Jen took the blue car, we had to drive Uncle John's cabinet. This is a liquor cabinet that Roy has had since before we were married. His Uncle John made it. So Roy is driving in the front left. Godfrey is in the front right. Someone I don't know is next to me. And I am hanging on on the back right. I was hanging on to the cabinet as we were driving. So we drive by this factory on my left. And there were five guys standing on a bridge over the interstate. They are all with their backs to me, and every one of them looks like Scott Anderson. Now, the dream that I had today also has a Scott in it, so this is interesting. Uh, they are dressed in orange and yellow, plain pastel colored t-shirts with their right hands over their hearts. They all had wavy blonde hair and were wearing baseball caps, blue ones. I asked Roy, why, are, why were they standing at the bridge facing the interstate like that? So the way it was, was the interstate was underneath them. They were standing right before a bridge and the lights were shining on the, on the road down below. So it wasn't hitting him, it, he was just watching, okay? It was dark out. Okay, hold on a second. I asked Roy why they were standing at the bridge facing the interstate like that. And he turned back to look then said they were on strike and this is this is saying that the you know the people that pledge allegiance to grace they're not doing anything for god they're on strike okay next thing i knew i found myself down an embankment in the grass it was dark out i saw lights up the hill so i stood up and almost got ran over by a herd of deer that were running coming from my left so i waited because there was one group after another, about five groups of 10 deer coming really fast from my left. One bunch at a time, almost seemed like waiting for traffic. After it was clear, an Australian shepherd ran up and barked at me, showing me the way up the hill. I saw two deer licking up blood and the dog led me around the way to my left after I walked up the hill. And I saw Uncle John's cabinet smashed on the street. Then I knew we had been hit. I was talking to Roy like he was right there with me. 
It was weird because he wasn't there. I thought Roy was with me, but he was not. I found him face down, dead on the pavement in a pool of blood. The other guy was face down, pinned under the truck, and his head was chin in the pavement like this. I looked closely at him, and he looked like an embalmed corpse at a funeral. But he was also, oh, but he was also bloody, very vivid and realistic, but I did not recognize him. I had no idea who this guy was. He was young in his 20s and looked like he was dressed in a suit, like Godfrey as well, and Roy. They were all dressed in suits. I think Godfrey was also dead, maybe underneath the vehicle. I thought I was unhurt. So how could this be? This white truck, like Roy's, I even noticed on the back of my husband's truck, it says STX and that. I think the T is red. I think so. On the back of the truck. The X is red. Oh, the X is red. I don't know. Anyway, it had hit us, I guess. So the truck hit us. That was so strange. I didn't see the driver. There was no one else around. I couldn't believe I was having to see this. I was a witness of this. Um, it was the graphic scene of an accident. I woke up with a sick feeling though. Wow, what an intense dream. There is so much here. This is for the entire body of Christ. The bed is intimacy that God is revealing through a ministry you are connected with. The people are actually different groups of the body. There are five parts mentioned. The girl, those who are allowing fellowship and nurturing, cuddling. The boy, those who know about your work for God and you but are totally but are not totally accepting of it, turning your back on someone and putting them under your feet upside down and back turned to you. Jennifer, she is your daughter, so some of those that you will mentor. Some will leave for their own ministry, drive a car, but tired means they are doing this in their own strength. Jonathan means gift of God, and 500 is five, mercy, and 100, a generation. So God is saying that they will not lose their salvation. There is mercy for them. Luke car is communion and relationship with God, so they are still on the right track, just getting tired because they are working in their own power. Roy, those who you are not in relationship with, they don't accept the message God is releasing. Um, and then Godfrey, the info that came with his name and the relationship reveals who he really is. This is the old man, the one walking in sin, as seen by the fact this was an old friend of your husband's, not God. So it is those who feel they are free of God, not wanting a relationship with him. They have the goofy or mixed up idea that God doesn't interact with man. Black hair is sin. Their thinking doesn't line up with God. Roy and Godfrey, these two groups of people are driving the liquor cabinet. They are operating in the spirit. John is gift of God, so they are still operating in gifts, for God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Romans eleven twenty nine. These people are at a crossroad, intersection in the highway. They are going in the direction of the five guys. Five is grace. The resemblance to someone who had a fellowship with you. This means that this is an old teaching in the church that grace is all we need. The fact that this person is in real life killed his whole family uh, is important. Focusing on grace, not believing that there is still punishment for sin. You know, you don't lose salvation, but may lose, use, sorry, it says use, but she meant lose. Okay, you but may lose your life here on earth. This can be seen in what they are wearing. Orange is stubbornness, yellow is of the mind. Both are pastel, meaning mixed with a religious spirit. Blue cap is what is covering their thoughts. Blue is a revelation. These following this false teaching are not working for God. They are doing nothing for the kingdom. They are on strike. You are right, people are pledging their allegiance to this teaching of grace, which leads to what happens next. The deer are those seeking God with their whole heart. As a deer panteth for the water, so my heart longeth after thee. Ten is ordained and five is God's grace, so God is ordaining those who will rightly display his true grace. When this happens, those following the false grace will find themselves in the situation you see next. 
Australian Shepherds are dogs that watch God's flocks. And a friend who helps you see what is happening. Two deer. Two is a number of multiplication. Blood is the source of life. Those seeking God with your whole heart will receive multiplication as others reap what they have sown. If they sow to the flesh under a false doctrine of grace, they will reap destruction. So that was a dream and the interpretation. Um, but so today Sven called me and he told me that this is what he heard. So now I've decided never to get in the car with my husband again. Um, so I asked the Lord this question. I said, praise God, Lord, I, I will share the dreams that you remind me of. So I just shared this one. I said, what do you say, Lord? Please tell me I will not lose the millennial kingdom. A thousand. Because remember I had that a thousand dollar fine in my bank account. <laughs> a thousand means the millennial kingdom. So then at 1023 a.m., this is what the Lord said. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Be still, daughter. Rest in me. I have profound plans for you as I confound the enemy. Be blessed now. Take care of my flock. They are hungry and thirsty. Feed them. Devote, yourselves fully, devote yourself fully to this. Ye are my nincompoop. <laughs> that is so funny the Lord told, called me a nincompoop okay now I gotta read you the definition it's so funny or maybe I'll just wait till I'm done ye are my nincompoop be strong in compassion as ye will heed oh sorry as ye will need it in not many days hence be strong in livery l-i-v-e-r-y now we have to I'm gonna write this down Nincompoop and livery. So these are words that I have to look up. Okay. Be strong in livery as you are strong in provision. Many are ready to join you as you rally together freedom from oppression and succulence. S U C C. So we're going to rally together freedom from oppression and succulence. My strength is in you. Pass it on. Pass it on, Yitta. Pass it on. Provisions are awaiting as you gather my flock. Hop to it now. Hop to it. Amen. So that was 14 minutes. So you read Psalm 14. Okay, now this is reminding me of something else. Hop to it. Uh, the Lord said hop to it. So I'm going to tell you a story quick. Years ago, it was probably 2003 or 2004, I was a massage therapist at this wellness center. And I think six people before me had refused to go to the hospital into the intensive care ward and um, and give this girl a massage. I don't know, they just didn't want to do it. So I was called to do it and so I said yes. And then I couldn't go that night because I was signed up to do massages on this uh, cruise ship for pastor appreciation. So I went on there and I asked the, um, I asked the uh, pastors that I was massaging, uh, some of them, not all of them, but some of them I asked to pray for this girl because I knew that I was going up there. And I asked the nurse, why was she in the hospital? And they told me that she swallowed a, a bottle of, I don't know if it was Tylenol or ibuprofen or something. This was a long time ago. But anyway, so she was there. So anyway, so so that happened. And then the next day in the morning, I went up to see her. And she was on suicide watch. So the nurse left the room and left me alone with her. And while I was there, I asked uh, if I could pray for her. So I prayed for her and... Um, Anyway, I think I said things to her, you know, I, I massaged her. But the thing was, is she was yellow, yellow, like her kidneys were failing. She had bruises. She had a fever. She had all of these contraindications that no person should have getting a massage. And I'm like, 
what doctor in his right mind would order a massage for her? Uh, but I, I did massage her. Uh, you know, the doctor ordered it, so I didn't refuse to give her a massage. So I massaged her. She paid me $40 cash. And uh, then I left. And then I went out in my car, and I was in my car, and I was just over my steering wheel, and I was praying for her, and I was just crying. And I prayed. I said, Lord, when she's alone at night, will you please comfort her? Will you go and comfort her? I pray that. Because I had been where she was once. It was so sad. <laughs> anyway. So I left, and then she called me back. She called me back. So this was Monday, and she called me back, and I went back there on Friday. And uh, while I was up there this time, she said, you know, I don't know what you... She said, I just want you to know that you did well. She said, since you've been here, I think I've had like 10 pastors and eight chaplains. I mean, I'm not sure of the number, but it was a lot. Pastors and chaplains go up there and visiting her. And then she says, she says, at night, he comforts me. And I'm like, who comforts you? She says, Jesus, he comes and he comforts me and he comforts me. I had never seen Jesus like that before. And it was so funny because years later, like maybe two or three years ago, he walked into my massage room and he, he got on his knees and he was praying for my client. He took her by the hand. And that was the first time. Well, it wasn't the first time I saw him. I saw him in my backyard one time. But it was the first time where he actually came and prayed for my client. Anyway, so when that happened, I almost fell off my chair. I said to the lady, I said, are you a Christian? And I didn't really know this lady. All I knew was I was supposed to massage somebody else and she came in their place and she told me that she was going through a divorce and she just said, she said, I just don't know if I can do it. And she laid down and just as soon as I touched her head, uh, the Lord gave me like well first he came in he came in he just came right in and I almost fell off my chair and I told you I asked if she was a Christian and I said Jesus is here he's holding your hand and he's kneeling down he's praying for you and then Jesus stood up he stood up and he had a needle and a thread and she had wounds in her chest like gaping wounds in the spirit I could see it and he was sewing them up he was sewing them up with a needle and a thread. It was just so amazing. And then he gave me a wonderful prophetic word for her. And then, uh, and then you know, after the after the fifty minutes, she went out in the room, and then I had to get somebody else. And then I did another massage, and then I went out, and she was still telling her friend everything that happened. And I worked at that place for five years, and I've never seen a client stay an hour in the waiting room before, and never since. That was it. She was so blown away by Jesus' love and compassion for her. And I still am. And the day when I prayed for this girl out in my car, when, as I took off, I turned on the radio, and that song Amazing Love came on, you know? Amazing Love, How Can It Be That You My King Would Die For Me? It was just so beautiful. Amazing. That is so amazing. So today I had another dream, and I need to share it with you too. So I'm going to share two dreams, another dream. Sorry this is going to get long, but you can just pause it if you want, if you can't listen to it all at once. So today I had a dream. This is a dream. It kind of goes with the first one. So the numbers... <clears throat> were very interesting. It's like opposites, you know. 826, one definition said to shine forth, and another, a conjurer, enchanter. And then 1206, on the one, it says on the second day, 
on the other mire, you know, mire, the miry clay. It's like the pit. Uh, 1212. 1212 came on my phone as I got up in the middle of the night. And I knew that when it came up, I just took a picture of it because I'm like, this is for me. And I didn't really know what it meant. But when I looked it up, it says clear, evident, in the shadow, protection of L. So God was showing me that I am under his protection. And then 616 says to give birth to. And then on the other is prisoners. So this is very interesting because then what he heard today was the plan of the enemy. <clears throat> I told him that when he hears things, God never says I ever, ever. He never says I ever. So listen to that. He doesn't ever say I. The enemy says I because he wants you to think that you're saying it, that you're thinking it. Or he wants you to think that, you know, that's the way God talks. God never says I. I've been hearing his voice for 42 years. I've never heard him say I. It's always the enemy. And uh, so, okay, I'll tell you the dream. This is the dream. I was talking with this guy, and he was giving me instructions, directions, on how to get a new driver's license, so a new identity. He told me what, I, what to do and where to go. I had an itchy ear. And I wondered if I had an ear infection. I got in the car and was doing what he said, but I didn't get around to calling the doctor. Next scene. I dreamt that my daughter-in-law and I were sitting on the couch together. She had these pills that she gave me, saying the doctor had given them to her for an ear infection, but she was allergic. And I said, thanks, how did you know I had an ear infection? <laughs> The pills were burgundy red with dark blue, blue or black spots, I'm not sure. And crescent shaped like a, the neck pillow that I just gave them when I was up there. Um, uh, okay, hold on. There were two random pills on top. So there was a bottle of these crescent shaped pills, but on, two pills were on top. One was a circle like a, like a hula hoop or a lifesaver, and then the other one just was sparkly like it shined light off of it okay and then she told me what they were but I think one was for nursing like one was for nursing I also had started nursing I went back to work and the people I left the baby with were feeding him so he wasn't hungry to nurse when I got him back so my milk I felt was going to dry up I needed a breast pump to make bottles I wanted to nurse for six months I saw all these clean bottles above the refrigerator. I opened the cabinet and they were up there. I needed to use these bottles to bottle milk. I decided I would just have to quit working to devote myself fully to this. And then as Susan and I were on the couch, her photos were coming on my phone. So I was playing with her, telling her things that had happened in the previous days. <laughs> this just cracks me up because when I woke up this morning and turned on my iPad, I was looking for my notebook and um, there was nothing for October. And I was like, oh no, what's happened to October? And then I clicked on the three dots and I clicked sync now. So the Lord confirmed that one right away. It's so funny. And then, uh, so I was telling her things that happened in the previous days and this was another thing when I reread this dream, I was thinking about how the enemy, he speaks about your past so many times. He doesn't remind you of good things. He reminds you of the bad things, all the bad things that happened in your past, you know. And uh, so in this dream, I was telling her things that had happened in the previous days. I was going to say what just happened yesterday, but I didn't. I confessed and told her about these photos. There were only five altogether, but she said, just turn off the sink on your phone. And she showed me how, and she did it for me. <laughs> and I dreamt that Roy was walking out the front door. He had just spoken to the pastor on the phone. And now Roy actually did go out the front door today to meet this same pastor. And his name is Scott. And I just went up to my friend's house, but was locked out. She's got a mess. Her husband locked the door accidentally. But I passed Scott Street. So... Already the Lord confirmed Scott. And then the other dream also was the sky, remember? Okay, 
So Roy was with Scott and uh, they had made arrangements to go somewhere together. He was carrying an orange raft as, I, as tall as him and as wide as the front door. It was rubber like the kind you'd take camping, the green ones. It was thick and soft like the green ones too, kind of fabric, you know, not the ones you use in the pool. It also seemed a bit deflated, but still kept its form. You know, it's like, it doesn't have the wind of the Holy, it doesn't have the air of the Holy Spirit filling it, like filling it full. Uh, but it keeps its form. It's like, you know, the power of God, a form of godliness, a form of godliness, but denying the power. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Okay. So Roy's got this raft and it's orange and orange means stubbornness. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, it can also mean uh, perseverance, but I think here it means stubbornness. I don't know. Okay, Roy had these dark sunglasses on as he turned to the left to talk to me over his back. He was wearing dark sunglasses. That means his eyes were dark. He wasn't letting the light of God in. And I, and it, it was super sunny outside. And then as he walked out the door, he was turning to his left, talking over his shoulder to me. And he said, I am, I am going north. There is a storm coming, and I don't know if I will go with Scott for his words, but he wanted to be with the, with Scott instead of with me. He wanted to be with Scott. So, uh, and then I asked, what if I lose power? Right as the door closed in my face, and I knew I was alone, and then as he stepped out, I heard, I love you. <laughs> And it's so funny because this is really a, a mirror image of the way it has been with Roy always walking out on me when I need him. You know, when I need something from him, he doesn't ever give it. He'll say I love you, but he doesn't mean it. He doesn't act like it. You know, God wants our works to 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 be what we say. Like if we say I'm gonna do something, do it. Don't just have empty words, idle words. These are the idle words that Idle words are the things the Lord showed me. <laughs> this is so funny. I'm going to finish this dream. Okay. I knew I was alone. I heard I love you. Roy said it. It was the last thing he said before he left. It began to sleet. And I could tell a storm was starting. Okay. That was a dream. But anyway, I was going to say that. Uh, what was I going to say? Roy... Oh, we had this painter come to the house and he was supposed to paint. And he said all of these things. And I gave him lunch and all this stuff, you know. He said, oh, this is such a big job. He says, but I'll do this and 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 I'll do this. And then he left and he came back a few days later and I'm like, are you going to do the job? He goes, yeah. And then he walked away and never came again. So the Lord showed me those are idle words. Idle words are things that you say, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and this, and this, but you never do them. Those are idle words, and those are the words that we're going to give an account for. So if you tell somebody uh, that you're going to do something, do it, or don't say you're going to do it. You know, in Ecclesiastes, it says, when you vow a vow unto the Most High Defer not to pay it, for he is in heaven and you're on earth. And he takes no pleasure in fools, therefore vow what you say. And, you know, the last time I went in the courts of heaven, uh, I mean, not this last time, but the time, and not the, okay, I've been a couple times since, but this one time I went to the courts of heaven. What I heard was, take no oaths and make no vows in the, in the courts of heaven. Um, and don't be ready to forgive yourself and others when you come into the courts of heaven. And then, and then do not bring enmity into my courtroom. Enmity is, uh, um, you can look it up. I think it's the same word that the Lord used when he said he'll put enmity between the Satan and the woman. Okay, that's the word. I don't know the meaning of it. I think it's separation or 
hatred or I don't know what it is. Okay. So, God is good. Um, so we have to look up. This is such a funny definition of nincompoop. Oh my goodness. The Lord, this is how I know it's him speaking to me because I don't know what, when I think of nincompoop, I'm thinking you're silly, you know. So the Lord thinks I'm silly, but, you know, this is what he really means. Um, he said, I am his nincompoop. So one of the nincompoop definitions, this is what it means. Each day's news seems to bring ever more horrific stories of greed, incompetence, arrogance, excess, deceit, and inconceivable nincompoopery. So nincompoop means a stupid or silly person, fool, simpleton. They could easily find some nincompoop to give them yet more money. A bunch of nincompoops that could not find themselves out of a restroom. I don't know, maybe the Lord's saying it's silly because I, I always, it seems like I seem, I always doubt. I do, I sometimes doubt how much he loves me. I just do. I've always done it because, you know, I was so rejected all my whole life. It's so funny. Hmm. So hop to it. Succulents. I'm going to look up succulents. Oh, so the second day that I went to the hospital to pray for that girl, remember she said I did it well, blah, anyway, she said $40, I paid her $40, so she paid me $40, but when I was there the second time, uh, this doctor came in, he was a, what's the name of that doctor, nephrologist, so he worked with her kidneys, and so this is funny, because I asked her, is there anything you want me to pray for you? And she said, well, because the doctor came and told her that her kidneys were failing, right? So that's what this hop to it remind me of. Um, so I went around the other side of the bed and I just touched her back and I just said, kidneys, hop to it. Do your business in Jesus' name. That's all I said. And then I walked out because I had to go to work at another job. And when I got to my other job, the guy that I worked for, he was in his 90s. And it was so funny. He said to me, Yida, hop to it. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> it was so funny. So that was just the Lord confirming. Anyway, so then I called back on Monday. And she had been released. She got released. So she she got healed. And she got released. Isn't that awesome? Okay. And succulent means the state of being succulent. Juicy, plump, pulpiness, fleshiness. Okay, succulent. Okay, succulent is full of juice. Moist and tasty of a plant having fleshy tissues that can serve moisture. Okay, this is rich in interest, succulent. So it says something here about together, you rally together freedom from oppression and succulents. That's awesome. Okay. All right. I guess that's it.